The, uh, as the further assessment of the cranial nerve examination includes assessment of the uh, third cranial nerve, fourth cranial nerve, and sixth cranial nerve. This cranial nerve can be examined uh, together, which is the usual uh, uh, clinical uh, t uh, training sequences or technique, and or can be examined individually, as I will show it just a few moments uh, later. Uh, really, if they are examined together, we have the following three steps, and each step is subdivided further into three findings or a step. The first step is a prime position. In the prime position, check whether the patient had proptosis, ptosis, or a pupillary inequality. This is the first step, prime position. The second step is to perform the H uh, test. From the H test, you can note whether the patient had any uh, nystagmus, ask him about any diplopia, and uh, note whether the patient had any limitation of his extraocular uh, muscle movement. The third step would be the uh, pupillary reaction to light, both direct and indirect. And uh, lastly, the accommodation test. I'll uh, show the sequences of examination the following manner. First of all, I'll check for a prime position. I'll put a pen in front of the patient to see whether the patient had ptosis, proptosis and I'll check for pupil whether they are equal, symmetrical or not. This is the first step. This is the prime position. The next step would be the edge test performance. I'll check for the, for the findings in the following manner. حمادة هسه شريدة هسه تباوع لي تباوع على القلم وين ما يروح القلم أريدك تحرك عيونك وياه بدون راسك بدون حركة راسك فقط القلم تحركه هسه هنا اوكي هنا عاشت ايدك هسه هنا هسه ترجع للنص هسه راح اشيك لك هاي الجهة تباوع لفوق هنا عفية هسه تباوع لهنا هسه راح ارجع لك النص اوكي اكو شفت عندك القلم صار صورتين باي منطقة من ضمن المناطق تشيكناها نهائيا ما صارت سو ايل نوت سو ذات ذا بيشنت هاد اني ليميتيشن اوف اكسترا اوكلر ماسل ان ذا اي موفمنت اور اني نستاجماس اند اي اسكت هيم اباوت ديبلوبيا ريلي Uh, nystagmus oscillation of the eyeball of the eye uh, and it is of two types either uh, jerky or pendular jerky is classified into uh, vertical nystagmus and horizontal nystagmus vertical nystagmus can be further classified into upbeat nystagmus and uh, downbeat nystagmus and so on if the patient had diplopia we can further assess it uh, later in the form of uh, cover test really these are the Uh, edge test examination. After that, I'll check the reaction of the uh, of the eyes, or mainly the pupil, in the form of direct and indirect. In the following manner, I'll check this eye. I said that you put bow al Okay. So the pupil is reacting. This is for the direct. The pupil became small, and I'll see the other. Pupil, while I, I am shining the light for this eye. After that, I'll check also the direct for this eye. Okay, and to see how much this constructed. And then the indirect by shining a light here and to see the constriction here. Okay. After that, I'll check for the accommodation test I'll ask the patient to look for a far object and then to look at an object what about five inches five inches from the eyes of the patient has to take about a little of my little offer well I did I said well I'll come okay the patient had the trial of tosis convergence and meiosis so he had 
accommodation test is uh, intact. Really, uh, sometimes when the patient had uh, what we call it afferent pupillary defect, we can use swinging light test in the following manner. The swinging light test, just like this, shining the light here and then immediately here and to see the pupillary size with the direction of the light. Normally, when I direct, for example, the light here to my left eye, I'll see that the pupil is constricted and also indirectly this pupil will also be constricted. This constriction here is more stronger than the constriction here because it is direct. Also, when I check this eye, I'll see also narrowing or constriction of my right pupil. Also, a little bit stronger than the constriction here. Swinging like uh, light uh, test is uh, designated just to assess whether the patient had Marcus Gunn pupil or not. Marcus Gunn pupil mean uh, afferent pupillary defect. That's to say the optic nerve is affected. Those who had uh, optic nerve defect, they will uh, show dilatation instead of constriction. Why? Because the light reflex is uh, subserved via the optic nerve as an efferent and the third cranial nerve as an efferent. So if I have a defect here, for example, in my optic, in my left optic nerve, when, when I uh, shine the light here, I have efferent pupillary defect. That's to say, though, there is no reception. So the eye, especially if it is blind, so the eye will never constrict it. Okay? When I when I shine the light to my right eye, there will be constriction because it is the indirect reaction comes from the third cranial nerve which supply both eyes. When I immediately shine the light upon this constricted, indirectly constricted eye, it will be dilated instead of constriction. This paradoxical dilatation instead of constriction is called Marcus Gunn, a pupil. Really, this is, these are the steps of the examination of the third oculomotor, trochlear and abducent uh, nerve. Uh, sometimes the examination may uh, include uh, questions about uh, assessment of a cranial nerve individually. If the question was to assess the third cranial nerve individually, you have to perform these three steps. Prime position, edge test, and the reaction, light and near accommodation reflex. If the question was to assess the fourth cranial nerve, you have to perform the, uh, first of all, prime position, this is one, and then to assess edge test, especially this movement, if, uh, for example, this eye had defect in the fourth cranial nerve, especially for this movement, bring the object in, and especially down, ask the patient to look at it from outer into N and especially down for the fourth cranial nerve, especially this step. And then, uh, to, this is for the fourth cranial nerve, is to perform Bolshevsky uh, test. Bolshevsky uh, sign or Bolshevsky test is designated is to see whether the, uh, the uh, eyes became parallel to each other with tilting of the head or not because patient who had uh, uh, fourth cranial nerve defect, for example, in this eye, he will tilt his head into the contralateral or opposite shoulder to get more parallel eye. Okay? Because the defect here in the superior oblique, so his eye will be a little bit higher than this eye, and to bring both of them parallel, he will tilt his uh, head into the opposite shoulder. We can perform Bolshevsky test in the following manner. I'll see both eyes and then tilt it like this and then tilt it like this and to see how much it is corrected uh, whether, whether it is corrected or not. These three steps for the fourth cranial nerve and the sixth cranial nerve also by prime position and by performance of the edge test especially the outer parts because the lateral rectus is supplied by the abducent 
by the abducens uh, nerve. All these issues are about the examination of the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve.